Hello, my name is Ramon Cordero. My colleagues are Christian Palomo and Dustin Crooks, and today we're going to be presenting the study of high-speed gears. Now, in order to understand high-speed gears, you first have to define a gear. A gear is basically a rotating mechanism with teeth of different geometries that will basically interconnect with another gear, and both of them will produce torque. Now, in today's society, there are some different types of gears, but the most common ones are the ones shown, the spur, helical, bevel, and worm gears. And as you can see, they all have different motions, mostly because um, their shaft alignment is all different for each one. Some basic um, background about high-speed gears is after the Industrial Revolution, many gears were developed and enhanced, and eventually, in the early 1930s, the high-speed gears were manufactured and marketed to other vendors. These characteristics of high-speed gears are that their speed ranges from 4,500 RPM all the way to 70,000 RPM, and they make a power output of 80,000 horsepower, but these numbers are increasing as time goes by. The main types of um, high-speed gears will be single and double helical gears, and the main reason for that is because um, these type of gears provide durability and strength, and as you can see here, um, this is a basic gear unit by high-speed gear. The units are made for noise reduction and also to um, protect the gears, and, in, and inside is a double helical gear. So some applications for high-speed gears is basically for propulsion systems, um, for automobiles, for aircraft, for turbines, from mortars, for compressors, generators, electric mortars. And as you can see here, um, there's a high-speed gear being used in an electric motor that produces electric power to mechanical power, and these are some of the centrifugal pumps, the compressors, and gas turbines used for high-speed gears. And I'm going to pass it to Christian Palomo, who's going to speak to you about vibration and obstacles in these high-speed gears. Thank you. Thank you, Ramon. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Christian. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, obstacles with the high-speed gears. With high-speed gears and with slow, uh, with high and low speeds, uh, gears have issues with vibrations, and one, uh, vibrations can cause a whole mess of issues. Um, one uh, with wear, wear is where uh, some of the me uh, metals actually uh, come, comes off the, the teeth. Another one, uh, you have misalignment, where you can see right here, where the gear actually shifts and can cause a lot of uh, issues with other gears in the area, where, and that leads up to uh, the final uh, problem, where you have uh, bro bro breaking teeth, where the teeth actually breaks and can cause uh, critical failure to the system and uh, more time downtime for the entire system. Uh, to avoid this, uh, they have a vibration analysis. Vibration, one of the common, uh, most common vibration analysis is the sepsis analysis, which calculates the spectrum of the signals. This is where you have the setup, you connect a bunch of sensors to the gearbox, in this case they have a motor connected to this gearbox over here, and the computer gets that information and puts it on and graphs it, and from this graph you can, uh, you can see side, uh, all the different frequencies and sidebands. Sidebands are uh, little peaks of uh, different vibrations around the, the, the main signal, and those sidebands can cause uh, different uh, modulations from the amplitude of the wave, and uh, those amplitudes are what causes those actual issues depending on the size. Uh, I'm going to leave it, I'm gonna leave it off to Dustin, who's going to talk to you about uh, materials and manufacturing. Thank you, Christian. I just want to give you guys some info about the materials. Uh, some common materials used for high-speed gears are metals and synthetics. Synthetics are good because they offer like good temperature resistance and they have more uh, lubricity, so they're, they're uh, like naturally lubricated, you don't need as much oil and stuff to run them. Um, metals are good because they offer high strength, and um, in case we need to increase the strength on these metals, on these metals we can do uh, hardening properties like add carbon, nitrogen, or nickel to the surface. Um, some common manufacturing of gears, some common techniques are casting, forging, and injection molding. Casting is good because it's very economical and repetitive. Manufacturers can uh, turn out a great quantity of gears in a short amount of time. Forging is good because it's basically the strongest way you're going to get the gear by uh, heat forging it. And injection molding is good for synthetics. Uh, you can just inject the molten synthetic into the mold and it's going to come out basically a finished product with 
hardly any machine left to do. In uh, manufacturing some of the teeth, we've got three basic methods, uh, milling, shaping, and hobbing. Uh, milling uses a rotational cutter, shaping uses a pinion and rack cutter, and hobbing, the cutter is shaped more like that of a worm gear. In conclusion, high-speed gears are good because they are very, very efficient, they have uh, good reliability, and um, the higher velocity means like more production. In the future, more research needs to be done into uh, cost and design and uh, to lower noise and right vibration. Thank you.